This module will look at key components in a PV solar plant and their maintenance requirements. The first component to consider will be the PV panels, the largest components in the facility. The module manufacturers normally guarantee minimum performance over 25 years and a guarantee against manufacturing defects during the first three to five years of the panel's life. If the panel is analysed during that period and defect is found, normally it must be replaced by the manufacturer. To do this analysis, check for defects when the plant panel is received and then check periodically to see if any production defect in the panel has emerged. The panel should be checked visually on arrival, followed by periodical visual checks looking for any yellowing, broken glass or defective connection boxes. The yellowing is an indication of flaws in the panel. Production defects are hard to pinpoint because they must be isolated and confirmed. First, the array with a performance issue has to be identified. In small facilities, a manual test for each array can be undertaken, but in larger facilities, a monitoring system must be capable of separating out performance issues in each array and notifying plant management of any arrays that are underperforming. Once the failing array has been detected, the failing panels within that array must be identified. This can be done by testing both the voltage and the current for each panel, or the panels can be inspected with a thermographic camera. If there are areas where the voltage is lower than elsewhere within the panel, the camera will detect it. The red areas on this slide are an example of that. Lower voltage usually indicates a defect and the panel should be replaced and normally replacement should be handled by the panel manufacturer. The inverter is one of the most important elements to be maintained. It can be considered, as we said before, as the heart of the PV facility. The best maintenance strategy will vary according to the type and size of the inverter. Where the inverters are small, there should be a number of inverters in stock at the plant. In that way, when the monitoring system indicates a malfunction, the inverter can be replaced from stock with minimal loss of production, time or money. The failed inverter should be sent to the factory for analysis and repair. With this approach, the plant is not dependent on the provision of spare parts from third parties. The plant managers can act themselves and as quickly as possible. Where the inverters are bigger, there are two options. Either the manufacturer can be responsible for maintenance or the plant management can do their own. Where the manufacturer is responsible for maintenance, it has the advantage that no people with qualifications in inverter repair are needed in the plant. The disadvantage is that the plant is dependent on the speedy reaction of the manufacturer when an incident occurs. Many manufacturers will require more than a week to repair an uh, inverter. Therefore, it's essential to include a clause for indemnity for production losses in the contract with them. Normally, if the repair takes more than a certain period, which should be less than 48 hours, the manufacturer should be responsible for the losses of the production in the plant. The second option is for the plant management to organise their own repairs. This will require people on site who have been trained by the inverter manufacturer. It will also be important to have spare parts in stock even the most expensive parts. The main aims for this option are independence of any third party and speed. It will normally only be practical in larger facilities. For smaller facilities, a contract with the manufacturers for maintenance is recommended. In any case, it's important to keep in mind that a guarantee of fast repair is dependent on adequate spare parts on site. The Sun Tracker is an element that needs a lot of maintenance as it is composed of both mechanical and electrical devices controlled by software. For mechanical devices, preventive maintenance is really important. If the repairs are done only after incidents, there is a great risk of damage to the inverter and the cost can be very high. The main maintenance tasks for inverters are for are or for sun trackers, or motor lubrication and center state supervision. The software must also be regularly updated to the latest versions. Increasingly, remote updating is available, saving time and money. Sun tracker maintenance can be outsourced or qualified people can be employed. Again, the best option will depend on the size of the site. For a large number of units, it may be sensible to keep sun tracker maintenance in-house. 
In the following slides, we will consider the maintenance of the control cabinets, the electrical system protections and the cables. For control cabinets, preventive maintenance is vital. Periodically, check the state of the control cabinets with a visual inspection and also add extra checks after bad weather. If water gets inside during a rainstorm, the control cabinet will lose its capabilities and must be replaced as soon as possible. However, control cabinet failures are rare. Maintenance of electrical protections is very important. Preventive maintenance and testing should be carried out periodically on those protections that can be tested. There should be periodical tests on all the connections of protection devices. If any fault is detected, the device must be immediately replaced. The most common incident in this kind of device is a bad connection causing an electrical arc and a rise in temperature, followed by device breakdown. That can put parts of the solar plant out of action, so it's very important to replace these from stock as quickly as possible. The size and nature of spare parts stock will depend on the costs of the parts. For cabling, if there are no sun trackers in the solar plant, regular checks of cable connections between the different pieces of equipment together with a check on cable covers will be sufficient once plant construction is complete. But where sun tracker systems are in place, it's important to check the cable route periodically and to test for mechanical tensions at any point. Meters are solid devices that should normally not normally fail. Once they're installed and the plant is commissioned, the electricity company purchasing power from the PV facility will seal the meter to ensure it's not tam tampered with by anyone else. But the meters perform a critical function in the solar plant and that justifies preventive maintenance. It's good practice to check whether the data from the meter is logical and that it corresponds with, with the data you're receiving from other sources. Normally the monitoring system should be able to provide similar information to that provided by the meters. Any incidents detected with the meters must be reported to the electricity company. And it should be the electricity company's responsibility to find a solution to any incident.